So, the ultimate Grigri user question. If I hold the Grigri like this, or like this, or like this, and I give slack, and the climber falls at that moment, will the Grigri lock or no? Let's find out. I've asked the same question on my Instagram, and about 30% of my followers said, yes, Grigri will lock during such use case, and I won't be able to hold the cam. Despite Petzl very clearly saying that you should always hold the brake side of the rope, so many people use it in so many different ways, that I decided to make a series of experiments to find out what happens if you don't follow these recommendations. So you is the one who is falling. Yes, we decided that that maybe it's better. You chickened out? Yeah. Since you love falling, it's gonna be great, no? Yeah. <laughs> if I don't get older because of these falls, faster. <laughs> And before I begin, a quick and a bit scary story, which was the main motivation for me to create this experiment, this video. And it happened about two years ago in a climbing gym where I was teaching two girls how to climb and it ended up almost in a fatal accident. One girl was about to clip while her friend was belaying her and I looked into the belayer and I noticed that there is not enough slack for clipping. So I advised, hey, give a little bit more rope so that your friend can clip. And then I look up, the climber clipped, and then without telling us, she decided to take a fall. And that fall was nearly to the ground. And here is a picture from another angle of the same climbing gym. Notice the red line on the wall, it's about two and a half meters from the ground. And the climber actually fell way below that line. She actually stopped maybe one meter above the ground or so. So luckily, I was actually holding the brake side of the rope as a backup, just in case. Independently that my belayer is belaying with the Grigri, who knows. And after the fall, my rope was tense, meaning that I caught the fall, not the belayer. Unfortunately, I didn't saw what was happening at belayer's hands during the fall, but my assumption was that she just pressed on the cam without holding the brake side of the rope because she had this bad habit from her previous teachers. And then I was just left with the question, could Grigri have slipped? or where was something else in that story. So, the plan was to abuse Grigri. Okay, go and ready. And have a second person as a backup and see what happens. The first experiment we did was a top rope fall with relatively thin rope of 9.4 millimeters. And to be safe, of course, we started with small falls. And then we kept increasing the length of the backup. Until we reached some really big falls. Then we also decided to try another very commonly used or misused grip on a grippy. strong guy abusing Grigri while a small girl falling on a top rope scenario would result into a ground fall if the strong guy would not let the Grigri in time. Now what if we swap? Can a small girl hold a cam while a big guy is falling?
So, to probe scenario, even a small girl can hold a cam while a big guy is falling and it didn't seem that the Grigri is gonna lock in any reasonable amount of time. So the next question is, what happens during a lead fall? With the theory that during the lead fall the impact is much greater and it should be much harder to hold the cam. So how is your fear of falling? Mm, no fear of falling on this way this route that's good but you didn't want it to take a lead fall no <laughs> so who is who is gonna take a lead fall then powell he said that he's dying who is to do it. oh you're dying to do the lead fall yeah i'm dying literally <laughs> <laughs> you have good friends then yeah. <laughs> okay one two three wow So, we managed to do only two tests with Anna holding the Grigri in such a way because she was not comfortable of doing that and it was slamming her hand and in both of these tests the Grigri worked as intended. Well, the Grigri locked. But I was not convinced and I decided to change her. For me, holding the cam was no problem. I didn't even felt that I need to press really hard. And for those of the people who belay like this and they will say that oh, I will just let go in time, take a look at real time speed of the action. So, good luck trying to let go in time. So, how was your uh, fall experience? <sighs> impressive, it's really impressive. <laughs> but it's nice. But the lead fall was like fast. Yeah, it was fast. I didn't have the time to shoot my pants. <laughs> and now I'm on the ground, so everything is fine. <laughs> You're next. <laughs> You're next. Really? Yes. <laughs> okay. Good! So far we did all the tests with 9.4 thin rope. So we decided to switch to a thicker rope of 9.8 mm mammoth rope and see what happens then. The theory was that the thicker rope should grab the cam way harder. So first we repeated the top rope fall. there was no significant difference, the cam was still very easy to hold. And then the lead fall. One, two, three. Ah! Motherfuck! <laughs> Lead fall was impressive. Take a look at real time speed. Do you think you would be able to let go the Grigri if such fall would happen? I hope yes, but probably no. It's just a hope. It happened like in the half of a second, so it's a lottery. Hmm. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds scary. Sounds scary. Like you are falling for half of a second. Another half of a second and I would be on the ground. So, again, 
maybe it's possible, but maybe one time in the tent it will never happen. Tent. So, to be clear, it's not a problem to press on a Grigli's cam. The problem is that people do not hold the brake hand of the rope. If you hold the brake hand of the rope, the Grigli locks. If you don't hold the brake hand of the rope, Grigri doesn't lock. And if you don't believe me, test on your Grigri on your rope. Maybe if your rope is super thick and fuzzy, it will lock. However, the day you will switch your rope, you might get surprises. So giving the slack like this, while you hold the brake side of the rope in your hand, which goes through a little tunnel, you don't need to press hard on the rope. It goes very gently between your fingers. It's totally fine and it also has another benefit. Let's say your climber is about to clip and you're giving him slack. And now your climber decides that he cannot clip and lets go the rope and you need to take the slack quickly. Well, guess what? You already have the rope in your hand. The only thing you need to do is take. Now, in a case where you don't hold the brake side of the rope, let's say you hold the grigri like this. You give slack and now suddenly you need to take slack quickly. What do you do? Take slack with the other hand. This is uncomfortable. Let this go and then try to grab the rope and take. This really sucks. Okay, let's say you hold like this. You give slack and now you need to take. Now this is a little bit faster because you kind of can just move your hand forward and drag like this, which is a little bit backwards the hand is backwards so it's a bit more awkward while in the proper use case you give slack you take slack it's super comfortable so most of the time belaying like this works very well and i use it most of the time However, in some situations, it's not that easy. For example, if you are on a multi-pitch and you have long loops of rope on sides of you, the brake side of the rope will be heavy. So you will have a lot of friction to drag through the belay device. In that situation, belaying with Grigri the same way you would belay with tubular device works better. So you would drag the rope up and feed to the Grigri drag the rope up and feed to the grigri. This would work better. Okay, so far so good. Now the question is, what's wrong with this? With no hands on a grigri? Well, there is multiple things that can go wrong. For example, if my climber is hanging on the rope while I'm sitting like this, and then my climber would decide to pull on the rope, my first reaction is actually to grab onto something. And then if my climber falls at that moment, he would fall, the rope would run through my hands, that would create extra friction, and it could be that it will be not enough friction for the Grigri to lock. So I would probably burn my hands, then let go, and then maybe Grigri will lock. So, keep your hand on the rope. It's very easy to do so. If you're just chilling, you can do like this. It's totally fine. If you really want to let go the arm, just tie a knot, like so, that's it. If you mess up something in this case, the knot will get jammed into the Grigri, and then good luck on tying it. I'm actually surprised how easy this rope goes through this Grigri. So, no hands belaying. Good! I'm almost sure you know somebody who needs to see this video, so please share it. And also, this video is part of Belay Masterclass series, where I teach belay and climbing techniques in great details. So if you want to learn more, check those videos out. And if you want more, consider subscribing. And special thank you for Mammoth and for everyone who is supporting me in creating these videos it helps a lot and if you want to join that here is the link to my website with all the information so thank you thank you and enjoy climbing